Let's start with what's the most likely question on paper one. Um, I love this koala here. When the whole class fights whether two or three was correct, your answer is some crazy number. Um, the very, very common question on the exams, especially on paper one, is when we have to put in all the data into some crazy equation and do some rounding and significant figures and scientific notation. So that's what I'm going to show you is build up these different skills. First of all, when we put in values into your calculator, it's really important, uh, the order of operations. I mean, that's at least a, a good um, way of going about things. So you might have heard of this PEMDAS, or some people call it bed mass. I mean, this is a parentheses. Uh, let's see, parentheses, yes. Um, after that, E is exponents. M is multiplication. I'll just say multiply, I'll say divide for D, I'll say A is add, and S is subtract. So what does this mean? This means that when you get a big equation, the important thing to do is to break out that equation in different parts and deal with the parentheses first. In other words, the brackets, these things like this, you know, so deal with the things within those brackets first. Exponents, something like, you know, something to the power of something else there, do those next. After that comes multiplying and dividing. Those can be the same. So actually you can do dividing and multiplying at the same time. And after that, you should do adding or subtracting. Now, most people just like to put them into their calculators and that's fine as long as you're really careful with your notation. As long as you're really careful how you put it into your calculator, that's fine. Some people like to put things in different steps, but it's really important that you can do this yourself. Uh, now, rounding is an important thing here. I like this one. It's time to round, uh, round up them cattle. Uh, okay, let's say it's an even 400. Ha ha, he's rounding up. Get it? Rounding up. Uh, so here, if we're rounding, uh, if they want two or three or, you know, whatever decimal places that they tell you, uh, it's important to sort of like chop off everything uh, afterwards. So um, remember the trick, though, that if the number afterwards, uh, after it is a five or higher, then you should round up. And if it's like zero through four, then you should leave it. And what does that mean? I mean, most people know this, but just to be absolutely sure that you remember how to do this, right? Uh, let's say we have an example like this, you know, 5.6789, and we're supposed to round it to two decimal places. What does that mean? Well, this is the decimal. So this means we have to go, we have to round here. So this will be our last decimal we use. But we have to look at the number after it and look at if that one forces this seven to round up or should it remain a seven? Do you notice an eight? So see it's five or more, so that means the eight makes it round up. So therefore our answer should be 5.6 and then this seven rounds up to an eight because this eight forces it to go up. So that's why this is the answer here, okay? So 5.68. This is how we do rounding. Uh, next thing is significant figures. Those are things that cause people lots of problems. Uh, one thing important, zeros to the left are not significant. What does that mean? A number like 0.0000124. This particular number right here only has this many. In other words, these ones right here, we ignore these as far as significant figures. So this one here has three significant figures. We often say SF for short. Uh, this one, however, zeros to the right are significant, which means this has one, two, and then ones to the right. We count them. So one, two, three has four significant figures. Uh, a really important uh, thing is this right here. Um, I like to make sort of a non-zero sandwich. What do I mean by that? I just mean that if there's zeros in the middle, count them. In other words, what I mean by that is I look at what's the leftmost non-zero number? In this case, it's the eight. What's the rightmost non-zero number? It's a five. And then usually then I would count to those right here. This, in this case right here, as long as there weren't any uh, zeros on the right, this would be helpful. This is a useful trick, especially when you're doing a scientific notation, which we're going to do in a second. This non-zero sandwich skill is pretty good. So in this case here, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five significant figures here. Uh, now, this is really important here. Maybe one of the most important things that I tell you, I use this all the time on the exams. Okay, so hugely important here. Da, 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 da. If you're not otherwise told, use three significant figures. Use three. Which means if you're going to write a decimal, like 1.23, in other words, in other words, use three significant figures um, if you're not otherwise told. And they're pretty strict about this, so this is really important. 
Finally comes scientific notation. This is the one that causes people a lot of problems. On the exams, they use this weird looking notation here. Look at this. It looks like this, like A times 10 to the K. And people freak out and go, what's A? Why? It's just a matter of decoding it. They tell you here that A is between one and 10. So that's fine then, your, your A here. In other words, it's not allowed to be 12. It has to be somewhere between one and 10. Um, Actually, I should probably even make it uh, less than that. Hold on a second here. I should actually technically make it like this. It should be under 10. Uh, so this is the format, and k can be some exponent. It's some number. And this is my little trick to doing scientific notation. Okay, there's like a little trick for you here, a little uh, way of doing this. Step one, make a non-zero sandwich. So what am I going to mean by that? Let's, let's maybe do it with some examples. I think it's nice to do some. So let's look at this one here. Write this number in scientific notation. Sometimes, you know, it's a, called standard form. People call it different names. But scientific notation is the most common one, I think. Uh, as far as looking at this, this is really useful stuff in science, oddly enough. When we look at gigantic numbers, we don't feel like writing all the zeros. Or super, super small numbers as well, we don't feel like writing all the zeros. So we write it, what's the most compact way we can write this number? That's what this scientific notation is all about. So for example, let's look at this one right here. We have 35280000. Now, these ones here are significant, true. So, you know, we can't just rewrite some number. We have to write a number that means the same thing. We can't just make up whatever. So first step is to make a non-zero sandwich. And what do I mean by that? We take the leftmost non-zero number, which is the 3. We take the rightmost non-zero number, which is the 8. So my non-zero sandwich is this, 3, 5, 2, 8. These are all the non-zero numbers I need, OK? So any zeros in between them, I count them. But any zeros to the left or to the right, I ignore those. So you see, now I've done my non-zero sandwich. I put a decimal after the first number. In other words, boom. Now I've got 3.528. Do you see now my first number right here? I'm going to write it as a times 10 to the k. Look at my very first number now. This is going to be a. Look, it's between 1 and 10. Ta-da. So now we've got this. Now we've just got to move the decimal as, um, decimal as needed. This sounds a bit confusing, but uh, here's how it works. We go times 10 to the power of something here. Here's what we're trying to figure out here. We're going to try to put in that number. So in this case, I'm going to say times 10 to the power of, and i got to fill in here. What number here? So here's a trick that I like to use. Uh, maybe I'll make it a purple. Right now, I mean, for real, the decimal is actually there. right? But we've artificially put it here. So you have to move your decimal over as needed. In other words, from right here. Um, we have to really count how many we have to put that decimal to the right to get it to where it really is. We artificially put it after the 3 here. So you have to sort of jump over and count, well, how many do I have to go over to get it to where it really is? It's really here. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to say this is 10 to the power of 9. And this is the answer. This is my scientific notation. Um, a quick note about uh, how this stuff right here works. You can look at your calculator display as well. Your calculator does it in a slightly different way. Sometimes they write this symbol E like this. Uh, so for example, your calculator might write this answer as like 3.528E9. This is your calculator's short form for it, OK? Uh, this just means times 10 to the power of 9. But don't ever give your answer in this calculator short form. Really write it out properly. Write it 10 to the power of 9. This is the same thing as this. So let's try this one now. So a different example here. We first make a non-zero sandwich. So we use a 3 and a 2. Those are the left and right most non-zero numbers. So I write my 3, 0, 2. I count the 0. Now I have to put a decimal after the first number. All right, 3.02. See, now A is between 1 and 10. Now what do I have to do? Times 10 to the power of something here. Let's look at where the decimal really is. This, uh, it takes a little bit of practice. Okay? Right now the decimal really is here. I've kind of artificially put it here. To get it from here to get it to over there, I have to go to the left by 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's for sure going to be a 4 here. But the important thing is if I made this 3 times 10 to the 4, you know, multiplying by 10 means the decimal goes to the right. I want it to go to the left. So how do I do that? I put a minus. 
So this is my answer. Okay, and if you're going to write it in a calculator, it'll probably be 3.02. It would look like E minus 4. So this is how we can write this in scientific notation.